Welcome to the Lifting the Mask podcast, presented by Explore Paintball and our sponsors, Fake Sponsor 1, Fake Sponsor 2, and Fake Sponsor 3, and our unofficial sponsor, GQPaintball.com, the best paintball store in all of Saskatchewan, maybe even the world. Now, on to the show. All right, welcome guys. This is uh, the Lifting the Mask podcast presented by Explore Paintball. Um, I kind of started this just because, well, on the first week I went out, um, I had the lovely, lovely luck of the mount for my action cam. Not the mount, well, I broke a mount. Like, literally, I just broke one mount and had to, like, jerry rig it so we could film. And then. Literally, we get out to play, and then the camera case literally just breaks and falls right off all the mounts and everything. And it's just like, well, not filming today. Don't know when I'm going to film again. Ended up looking up the price on the stupid (laughs) uh, case for it. And it literally is just like, the shipping is just about more than the case. So you got to buy like two cases to make it like half decent. Even then, yeah, I still haven't ordered it, just have not gotten around to it and kind of keep forgetting. But yeah, the that was back in April 22nd was the first weekend I went out and played this year. Uh, I took out the uh, Trilogy Autococker that I bought last fall and it's really pretty. It's all silver, like silver. I don't even know if you call it silver or chrome or... It's shiny and pretty, and that's why I liked it, and I whistled really hard there. Hopefully that didn't kill anybody's ears. But, yeah, I took the trilogy out, played a few games with that, and it shot really good. Like, probably one of my new main guns that I'm going to take out all the time when playing Rec, because that thing shoots freaking laser beams. And it was just really fun. Like, the sound was just too too good not to like keep shooting it was just too much fun but yeah like we played uh, i think we ended up playing first game was like the big town or whatever and there was only like four or five of us and i don't think anything too exciting happened the first game uh then we ended up moving on over to the bale slash uh barrel field slash pipes i don't know what to call it anymore it's like a it's a time like that's one of the tiniest fields there but, like, so we, it was just two on twos because we were waiting on, I think it was Kyle. Yeah, we were waiting on Kyle and we were just didn't want to sit there anymore. So we went and played some two on twos. And, uh, yeah, Kyle, Alpha, 22, Megfed. Yeah, he came out with his son and uh, Amadeus. I can't, I think, it was that, I think that's what his name was. But, yeah, they had came out. But, meanwhile, while we were waiting for them to get ready... Uh, we played some two on twos. It was like me and Lucas uh, on one team, and Lucas like it was the first time meeting him and playing with him. He did pretty good for the day, and he was shooting. I think it was an A five or X seven, something like that. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, we were playing two on twos, and like I had shot the first guy out on the one game in the one game, shot the one guy out, and Lucas was like keeping the other guy in in his bunker and just peppering the freaking bumper bumper (laughs) the bunker and uh so i like bumped out wide to like the left side or whatever and managed to get around him and bunker him with the trilogy just put two in his tried to go for the pack got his back i'm still sorry for that that yeah i tried to be nice and failed (laughs) look at me go (laughs) um but yeah then i think we ended up uh playing at frank's and i think we ended up we ended up joining up uh walking on with some like one of the groups because one of the groups actually let us join in that and uh, so we got some actually bigger games in which was nice uh then yeah uh when we were playing at frank's i remember <laughs> um luke was kept trying to go through the bush and i kept shooting him through the bush and then while I was defending the castle thingy but yeah he like it was this giant castle and like there's like bushes on either side he kept going to the bush on the one side and I I kept seeing him 
like go there and I just like managed to lead him and drop shots in him like three or four times in a row before he was like, okay, I'm changing it up. Like this is not working for me. So yeah, like did that. Like we played some games with those guys. Uh, don't really remember much else happening after that. Yeah, this podcast is just pretty much a catch up of what kind of has been going on and what's kind of happened so far in the season for me since I don't have any video footage from it. But yeah, so the second weekend I got to go out, we went up to uh, Prince Albert, uh, upside, outside of Prince Albert, went up to Wildside Paintball, home of GQPaintball.com. So we got to check out the store. I managed to, or I managed, I picked up a HK Army goggle mount so I don't have to deal with the 3D printer ones and I wanted to try one out and damn, they good. Like all aluminum construction, stuff like that and screws in really good. Um, still haven't put a camera on it because I still haven't gotten a case for my uh, action cam but that's whatever. But yeah, the second we like we went out when we went blah, 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 blah. when we went out to Wildside, um, just doing this. There's no script. I'm trying to just remember things and keep talking so there's not much data. But yeah, we went and um, we played the Lone Star 2023 Open layout, which was it was a pretty fun layout. I seem to have, I seem that I played a little bit better. Oh, hopefully those semis don't catch in this microphone. But whatever. <laughs> but we, I seem to have played the snake a little bit better. Uh, on that day, was able to get in and dive actually pretty good for the first like, dives of the year. Didn't destroy myself too bad. It was sore, but didn't just absolutely destroy myself. But yeah, I seemed to play the snake a little bit better. Was able to get up to the, the 50 snake pretty quick and easy, it seemed. Um, but once I got there, it always seemed like somebody was in, like, Dorito 3 just, tr like, damn near destroying me every time that way. Which, yeah. It had some good gun battles in there, but, like, I got shot out more than I finished points. But that's, whatever. But, like, the start that day, we kind of, we did some one-on-ones, and it was kind of the weirdest thing, whereas... All the really experienced guys were losing to... Well, most of the experienced guys were losing to the guys who haven't played nearly as much. Which was kind of interesting to see. Like, in my one-on-one, -on -one, I ended up playing uh, Supes. And I just pretty much ran at him. And was like, I'm just going to run around try to make him lose me. Which I managed to do, surprisingly. And kind of bunkered him. Not like super close, but like got got the drop on him on the side, which I was pretty surprised and I was like, yeah, I did it. But yeah, then like I remember one point in the snake, I got absolutely dunked on. So I was just like crawling up to the 50 snake and their uh, other team snake, they must have, I don't know, saw me or something, but like. As I was crawling, just get laced up the back, which that was bound to happen eventually. But that was a good day. Like we played for quite a while. It was good to get back on the speedball field. Um, yeah. Then like the next thing, I think it was. I'm not even sure what weekend. Then I kind of lose track of what kind of I did this year so far. But at one point, I started running uh, the walk on days. I ran one of the walk-on days for Divide and Conquer out of outside of Saskatoon. And that one I played with the old uh, TMC. And this was like the first weekend I had actually played with it using the MWR Empty Chamber Discharge Prevention Device. That is... can't remember the acronym, but remember what it's called. Yeah, it was the first time playing with that. Eh, I don't think there was really two. We that was another one where like we had maybe four or five guys come play walk on, so we ended up just joining in with a group that would let us. Um, but yeah, that was just more of a kind of a testing day for that uh, the empty chamber discharge prevention device, 
And I really like it. It definitely helps conserve air. And because you're not just popping off blank shots and you're not giving your way or yourself away with those blank shots. But the only thing is, the, like, when you do shoot it dry, your mag dry, when you go to reload, you have to recock the bolt, which is... It adds more realism, which is nice, but, like, eventually I'm going to forget to do that <laughs> and get shot. But, yeah. Tried using my scope, like, my red dot or whatever, and just, like... I ended up getting frustrated with it because I couldn't hit anything with it. I just took, ended up taking it off. And then... uh after that, I don't know if I really did any more walk-on ones, but I ended up uh, starting to get do some refing again just to get some, just to earn a little bit of extra money. Uh, I ended up taking, I think both groups I've taken out, two or three groups I've taken out. Well, there's two memorable group, memorable groups. The first one I took out was just like a small stag of. Oh, maybe like a dozen people or something like that. And uh, this was the group where I was, they had the future mayor of Fulda who's marrying the princess of Fulda. Um, for those of you that don't know, Fulda is a t tiny, tiny town. Like, you drive past, you blink, you miss it kind of town. So that makes the joke even funnier to me because that's pretty much, I grew up, in the well not in the Fulda area but like I knew where Fulda was like growing up and stuff and yeah it's just kind of tiny Saskatchewan towns man like ghost towns that aren't ghost towns yet but yeah I took that group out um can't remember if it was that group or yeah I think it was that group where I decided I first was the group in in the middle, I might have had a third group. Can't really remember, but there was like a second. I think it was the second group or that and that that I ended up taking. Uh, just having a pistol on me, and I took the SAR out, and I decided to to have them play a game of VIP where uh, <laughs> I'd go hide in the bush, and they had to come find me, and if they shot me, like they were technically lose or whatever but it ended up like i got shot before anybody even came close to me and like said the phrase or whatever to like rescue me and take me back there to the base it was a kind of a fun game like i just ended up taking pot shots with the sar and pistol and it was more fun for me i think i think they did enjoy it seemed like they enjoyed it then uh i can't remember if it was yeah i think it was that day too where all the walk-on guys decided to join up with the group I was refing. So I decided to hop in and actually play. And managed to get the first elimination, first actual in-game elimination with the SAR. And it wasn't really working the greatest. Like, I'm having trouble with the mags, and I'm just not sure how to go about cleaning them or fixing them or what I need to do but it seemed like the actual caulking of the because it's a bolt action SAR and it seemed like the caulking of the SAR and actually and that was working good like so I ended up just twisting the barrel breach feeding all these freaking first strike rounds into it but I managed to get like a it's probably like an 80 yard shot just loop lobbed it in there on uh Brandon or I'm pretty sure it was Brandon yeah because he said he like because after the game I was like I looked like I hit him I'm just like watch the dark and I'm like tracking it I'm like oh shit is it gonna you know, then I look and it, I see him like look down and then I didn't see his hand go up then I just saw him walking out with his hand go up and I'm just like did I get him or did somebody else get him because that looked really freaking close because it took like a f like four or five shots to actually get him. Luckily, I was using second strike, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I'm just about out, out of all the first strikes I've collected off the ground now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was nice to get actually an elimination with it. And that was... Because I do have this art, for the most part, sighted in. It's not, like, super, super accurate yet. 
but it's it's definitely getting there i'm getting used to the marker it was cocked like the bolt action part was working good and it seemed to be cocking pretty regularly and good for me which was nice so i've had was having some trouble with it just shooting in the backyard trying to get it sighted in i do think i need to raise the velocity but i gotta look that up because i haven't adjusted it yet so yeah that looking forward to like shooting that a lot more and then um uh, i think then there was like another group i had taken out where if you've reffed a lot of groups there's uh it's just kind of it's kind of lawless how groups come in like nobody ever shows up on time and half the time when there's groups one group shows up late then you got like three or four groups come in and at once and you gotta try to figure out who's reffing what group and which because all these groups we call on like through a page in facebook a ref group that for the field and then you call a group then you take that group out later and whatnot and it's just so that not one person's taking trying to take all the groups and that and whatever just to make things more organized and whatnot but yeah, this day it was not organized because like three or four groups showed up at once and nobody had any idea what's going on. Like the group I was supposed to ref, apparently I ended up taking the right group, but I thought I just took some random group. Turns out it was the right group. They had just uh, miscalculated how many people were actually coming. So they booked for like 30 or something, but only like 10 12 maybe showed up something like that and yeah like it was it was whatever i mean still took them out they had fun i think there was i did do try to do a couple of ref life videos but like i forgot how much space my one the one phone i use for filming has so it was kind of yeah didn't do too much filming i still have to go through that footage but yeah, like, that last group I took out, like, I don't know how many times I've been asked this, but, like, uh, guy, people asking about, like, pepper balls and stuff, like, it's technically, I'm not even fairly sure, like, pepper balls and that are technically illegal in Canada if you get caught with them, the gut. It was just kind of one of those things where you gotta, like, tell people, like, yeah, this is kind of what's then they didn't believe like and like you gotta tell people some of these weird things like yeah if you commit a crime with a paintball gun it's technically you get charged as a firearms offense and this and that and they were just like what i didn't think that yeah and just like what well, a lot of what i do on the field too is a lot of education like i try to teach people about the sport and what kind of goes on and how far we've come I think that's why I really like shooting the autocock because it it is like eye candy, and it's different, really different from what everything out there. That's why I'm trying to get like a, I really want to get a PGP or like a Splatmaster or like one of those old, really old guns. Eventually, I'll get this uh, poison I got sitting in here, um, going again. But uh, yeah, that's been kind of a pain. <laughs> um. What else do I got written down here? Da, da, da. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what's kind of gone on up to this point. This Saturday, I'm actually heading out if I get this out. Because today is, what, the 6th or something? 5th. 5th. So, this was the 8th. I'm, supposed, I'm going out to Wildside to play some more speedball, get some more practice in, actually shoot the CS2 Pro more than I have in a whole. Oh, it'll be like the most I've ever shot it in a year. Like, I bought it, and I think it's only got like 8,000 shots on it, and I bought it brand new. It had like just the test shots on it from Factory when I bought it from Brandon Cornell from Edm Ed Edmonton Impact. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, really excited to shoot that. Um, kind of, this has just kind of been a, yeah, this is what's kind of going on in, for me for the season. Um, I do have a bunch of like actual 
videos and story times and stuff like that that I have done. I just need to upload them actually to YouTube and upload this to YouTube and the pilot to YouTube. Eventually I'll get there. But I've kind of been holding off on it just so once I get the gameplay stuff going again, then I can like alternate. And then I got to do like we still have like a bunch more projects and stuff like film projects and late to the party reviews I got to do and stuff like that. But yeah, like the next episode, I think I'll try to just uh, pick one topic and kind of go from there. This has kind of just been a, a little bit of a recap of the year so far. There's no... I'm going to see if there's uh, some big events happening in Saskatchewan. I'll start talking to people, see if they want to come on the podcast. This has just been like 20-some minutes of me just rambling on. Hopefully this comes through good. I don't know if I'm going to even listen to this fully. It should be fine. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much all I got uh, for you guys today. Um, make sure to go check out GQPaintball.com. They're not a sponsor. I'm just like big fan of them. That's pretty much the only paintball store one of the only paintball stores in Saskatchewan. The other one's down in Swift Current, and that's Army Paintball. But I, like 99... Yeah, I'd say like 99% of the paintball stuff I've bought and has been from uh, GQ. It was General's Quarters in Birch Hills. Uh, the new owner moved it to his farm just outside of Prince Albert. But yeah, it's GQPaintball.com now. And awesome dude. Best mullet I've ever seen. It's worth the drive to go see the shop and just see that glorious mullet, like, kind of mullet. Uh, but uh, great sales, like, he knows what he's talking about. If he doesn't know, he reaches out and gets the information you need. Yeah, other than that, guys, I got nothing else for you. Um, if you've listened this far, um... Message me with a code or I'm going to steal a little something from sideline, uh, from the Sidelines podcast that I like that they're doing. They're doing like a code work, code work, code word of the week. Um, what should be the code word be to this, this day? Uh, how about since like I did a bunch of eliminations with the old... Um, Cocker. How about Cocker Harvest? <laughs> cocker Harvest! Yeah. Um, just hit me in the DMs. Um, most probably if you're listening, yeah, just Chris, Christopher Struck on Facebook or message Explore Paintball on Facebook. I don't think you can really... I'll just put up a QA thing what, asking what the code word of the week was, but yeah, if you've managed to listen this far, I'd be surprised if most people did. <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, and pretty soon we're going to lift on the, uh, mat the mask on a few players off the field, of course. <laughs>